You are listening to Dove Valley Deep Divers with Eric Trickle and Lance Sanderson. Ball comes out of the hands of Newton. It's on the ground, picked up by T.J. Ward at the four-yard line. Vaughn Miller did it again. On Overtime Media. Okay, we are live. We're going to let this stream breathe just for a second. It's going out across five different social channels, so we want to make sure it's nice and steady and stable for you, our great listeners. Welcome in, everybody, to an episode of Dove Valley Deep Divers. I am your temporary co-host, Chad Jensen, and with me is my partner in crime on this effort this evening. You know him, you love him. He is Mile High Huddle Senior Draft Analyst, Eric Trickle. Eric, how you doing today, bro? Doing pretty good and having a lot of fun spending time with my family and everything and just working on typing up finding Broncos and everything and just enjoying life. Yeah, I, I let those know. Zach and I did a um, kind of a makeup huddle up pod episode earlier today, and I let everybody know in that podcast that there is a specific pl- uh, playlist on YouTube that has all of the finding Broncos scouting reports that we've published up to this point. They're all in one place. So if you guys want to uh, sit down and watch those, there's a, you know, one place to find everything you need, and we're going to be adding to those. I mean, I'm sitting here right now with probably, shoot, Eric, 25, 30 scouting reports in, in your Finding Broncos series that we are that are just in the hopper that we're kind of staging as we go. So learning a lot about this draft class and uh, getting excited for the draft. And even though we can't quite, you know, there's certain buzzwords you guys all know we can't say on this podcast anymore. We got. We did get at least some positive juju, whatever you want to call it, earlier today when we learned that the administration told an, a, an assembled group of sports leagues, hopefully, hopefully by August and September, people are able to return to stadiums and and do their arenas and do their things. So let's we're we're holding on to that. At least I am. I'm holding on to that as a, as like a like a lightning rod in the dark right now, and hopefully it shakes out that way, Eric. Yeah, definitely. I mean, right now we're just enjoying what sports we can have. And I don't know what I would do if we don't have football in time in September. Yeah, it would be really hard for those of us who are, in fact, deep divers as it relates to not just the Denver Broncos, but football overall. It's just a sad possibility that I don't even want to contemplate. I just want to focus on the fact that, hey, We've got a NFL draft coming up in less than, excuse me, less than three weeks. And we've got some relatively positive storylines coming out of Washington that August and September, guess what? It's not going to be the walking dead. All right. So we're going to be, we're going to be okay. We got uh, an interesting topic that I wanted to pick Eric's brain on. So blame me for the topic of tonight's show on the five most likely candidates to hear their name called by the Denver Broncos at pick 15. Now that's assuming the Broncos stay at 15. And we're going to get to that here in just one second. First, though, a couple of really quick matters of business, guys. Make sure you follow this show's Twitter account. If you're on Twitter, at DVDD underscore pod. That's how you stay in touch and uh, and plugged in with everything Eric and Lance are doing on the daily and then while you're at it, you want to follow the main podcast account, Huddle Up Pod, which tweets out links and updates and everything from all three of the Mile High Huddle podcasts. And while you're at it, too, the main account for the site itself, at Mile High Huddle. And those of you listening to this as a podcast after the fact, make sure you head on over to Apple Podcasts, leave a creative review. Let us know how you're doing, whether you're reviewing the Huddle Up podcast, you're reviewing Dove Valley Deep Divers, or Building the Broncos. It's a easy, organic way that you can support what we're doing here and help the Huddle Up podcast, which includes Dove Valley Deep Divers, which includes Building the Broncos, continue to climb up the Apple Podcast charts. So take care of that business. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. All right, Eric, let's unveil it. The five most likely, and by the way, guys, we're going to get to your uh, comments and questions and whatnot here just uh, just in a, in a few minutes and any questions that you do have we got to keep this podcast a little bit shorter than than you know is traditional we usually kind of keep it at about an hour 
and it's my fault, but we got to keep this one about half that long today. So we're, we're kind of shooting for about a 30 minute podcast. So whatever your questions might be, get them in early. And as soon as we get done discussing these five guys here in just a minute, we will get to your questions. Bona Beast, what's up, my friend? Anon, Stu, Rebels Legacy. We'll get to you in just one second. Let's talk about these five prospects, Eric. And this is Eric's list. This is who he's hearing would be the most the five most likely candidates, of course, it includes the blue chip three wide receivers of Henry Ruggs, CeeDee Lamb, Jerry Judy. Tristan Wirfs, probably not a big surprise, the offensive tackle from Iowa to anyone watching right now. The one that did surprise me, Eric, Xavier McKinney, the DB, the safety. Um, so however you let, – let's start that way. Let's start with the one off the top that's that I think a lot of fans probably did a double take. Why Xavier McKinney when the Broncos have – an all pro second team, all pro and Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson still with, you know, two years left on his deal. Well, look at how old, what did you guys start with is look at how old Kareem Jackson is and his age. He's going to be what? 32 this year, or he already is 32. And while he does have two years left on his deal, Denver can get out of his deal after this year without much money on their cap hit. So they can sit there and, Go and look at replacing him. I mean, they got to pay Justin Simmons. He's on the franchise tag. They're going to keep him around. They're going to lock him up long term. So you don't want too much money invested at your safety position, which is what's going to be the case with already with Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson. Not only that, Vic Fangio recently spoke at the Combine about using more six defensive backs, seven defensive backs, to help cover up the issues that Denver's getting from their coverage with their linebackers. So Xavier McKinney, he's that guy that can really help in that coverage ability there, giving them that number three corner or that number three safety that can come down and play the slot corner position and really do what Will Parks did for the defense this last year. As we all know, Will Parks left. He booked it to Philly for, on a cheaper deal to get a chance to start and basically return home. So Denver's looking for that number three safety. And Xavier McKinney can step in. He can be developed. He's got this wide range of skill sets that fit right in to what Vic Vangio wants out of his defense and then eventually take over as a starter, whether it be after this 2020 season or letting Kareem Jackson f- finish out his deal and then going with uh, Xavier McKinney and Justin Simmons after the 2021 season. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be Kareem Jackson's age 32 season. When the Broncos signed him, he was 31. So that is a very fair point. And one of the unfilled needs at this point heading into the NFL draft is that third safety position. But it did surprise me even more so than – you know, taking uh, uh, what's the kid from Oklahoma, the linebacker? I always brain fart. Kenneth uh, Murray. Murray. Kenneth Murray, thank you. Um, or Patrick Queen, this, the linebacker from LSU. Looking here at Xavier McKinney, this is from the Finding Broncos scouting report all, that Eric has already published at milehighhuddle.com. I'll, I'll put the link here in the comment stream when you guys get some time. You can go check that out. But I want to read a couple of excerpts here. This is a, a DB that's six foot, 201. He ran a 4.6340, put up 19 reps on the bench. And I'm looking at his statistics here. Lots of tackles, some sacks, some picks, some forced fumbles. The guy's a playmaker. If you were to compare him, I know this isn't your favorite thing to do, but not everybody's, Eric, is is uh, a draft nick and knows the name of every single player in the class and whatnot. One of the easy ways for fans who aren't as dialed in to every person in the class is – Pro comparisons. If you were to compare him to a, an existing NFL player, who would it be? I think that one comparison that I've heard that I really like is Malcolm Jenkins, just with the versatility that he brings to the defense, being able to play that deep safety, being able to play closer to the line, play in the, play in the slot, and even potentially depending on the receiver he's matched up, he can play out on the boundary too. So he just has that complete versatility to play anywhere in the secondary for the Broncos, similar to what Malcolm Jackson has, Malcolm Jenkins brought with the Philadelphia Eagles over the last few years. And Malcolm Jenkins, you know, he's not a sexy name in terms of he's not one of these guys that has a really high profile, not a lot of personal accolades. He's got a couple of rings, though, and he plays at a really high level and he's made a ton of money in the NFL. So if you're getting compared to a guy and your name is Xavier McKinney like that, that that can't be anything but a good thing. I think the one that everyone's, you know, pretty or the ones I should say everyone's pretty familiar with here, Eric, on your list. Henry Ruggs, CeeDee Lamb, Jerry Judy. What are you hearing as we inch closer to the draft in terms of the first wideout that's probably going to be taken off the board? Well, there's been some speculation that Henry Ruggs is going to be the first wide receiver taken, and I've actually heard a lot of that myself, too, in conversations I've had. But the conversations I've had with these people saying that is that they believe that Denver is a team to land him. 
either by trading up and going and getting him or just receivers not going as early as people are talking about. I've had multiple conversations about with guys in the NFL that have said that receiver maybe start going off the board at 15, not going out off the board at 11 or 12, as a lot of people have been speculating. So obviously there's a lot of smoke in here. Hard to, de- hard to decipher what is smoke, what's real. Right. So that's something to keep an eye on, but definitely Henry Ruggs is one name that's being talked about it. And after him, CD lamb is the other guy being talked about being the first wide receiver taken. Which one is the best fit? Do you maintain rugs would make the most sense in terms of the perfect compliment to Sutton and also the perfect compliment based on, the needs and demands of this scheme that's going to be installed soon by Pat Shermer. If I had to pick one receiver of these three, that's the best fit for the Broncos. It is definitely Henry Ruggs. Yes, he has, he has tremendous speed. I mean, he averages 9.4 yards per second gained with translating his 40 yard dash time to what he's doing on the field. That's almost the first down in a second. So that is, that's huge numbers right there. He brings the speed. His route running is not the best, but it improved as the season went on. He has great hands. He only had, I think, career, three total career drops. And he had, I think it was like 24 touchdowns, like huge touchdown to catch ratio. Just made tremendous plays. Ran multiple routes at Alabama. I mean, the slant was one of his best routes, not just the go route or the deep post. I mean, he killed it with the slant. He was just able to get off the either press or a free release, he was able to get on there, get quickly onto his break, get open, and just speed off with that. But his speed is something that just opens up everything else So for everyone else on the Broncos' offense. And I spoke to one scout who was in there saying that out of all the players in the draft, Henry Ruggs might be the player that has the biggest impact, the quickest in the NFL, just because of what his speed opens up for everyone else on offense. That's really interesting. I mean, for those of you trying to wrap your brain around that, just ask someone like Travis Kelsey what the speed of the cheetah there, uh, Tyreek Hill, how that opens up and creates opportunities for him as a as a player, you know, mostly running routes and doing his work between the hashes, does a guy like Kelsey. It just opens the door and opens the way for everybody to eat. And then, of course, you get the ball in his hands and it's lights out. So, and that's a that's a really good point, Eric, as far as his numbers, the the touchdown to touch ratio, because if you compare the resume of Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs, both of I mean they were teammates in, in Alabama, you look at the numbers and Jerry Judy had significantly higher production from a catch and yards perspective. But when you take the the uh, touchdowns and also the yards per catch, Ruggs beats, you know, it, it's he emerges head and shoulders, even though Judy had, I think, two more touchdowns and over that same three-year period than Ruggs did, it was after significantly more touches. So it's it's a really interesting dynamic. All Any of those three, though, I think most fans would be excited if that's the pick for the Denver Broncos at 15. What are you hearing, though? And then we'll grab Bronx legend here. What are you hearing about Tristan Wirfs? There's been a lot of speculation going around that he may be better at guard in the NFL than tackle from, and this is coming from a lot of guys in the NFL. I personally feel that he's a guy that you can plug in at left tackle right away, let him grow and develop at the position, and three years from now you're talking about him being one of the best left tackles in the NFL. I'm perfectly fine with that. I think he answered the questions about the fact that he is a tackle at the combine, but there are still some in the NFL that have that concern, and I think that is going to be a reason that if he falls, that will be why, is because a lot of people, they're trying to go away from, unless you are a guard like um the guy the Colts took at five a couple years ago. Um oh no. I, you're gonna put it on me who can never remember I, names. I can't think of, um, Quentin Nelson. There you go. Quentin Nelson, unless you're a player of his caliber at guard, then you're not going top ten. And the, as good as Tristan Warps is, he's not viewed as that same kind of caliber of a guard in the NFL as Quentin Nelson is or as a prospect. He's gonna have a lot to learn. But as a tackle, I mean, the athletic upside that he has and brings to it, and he has a pretty sound technical base. So I like the fit there at tackle. I think that Denver, if they end up drafting him, if he did fall, I think we'd start hearing a lot more conversations about moving Graham Glasgow to center, letting right. Tristan Warps play at right guard, let him develop, and then move him out to tackle if J- Jawan James gets hurt or if Denver moves on from Garrett Bowles or Jawan James after the season. It just opens up a lot more options with them going forward as well. Speaking of Bowles, and then we'll grab Bronx here, we're inching closer to the decision point for the Denver Broncos, which will come not long after the draft on Garrett Bowles' fifth-year option. If you had to make a bold prediction today, do you think they pick it up? Because I'm predicting that they do end up picking it up. But what do you think? 
I think they'll end up picking up his fifth-year option for it. I don't think that they'll get a offensive tackle they like high enough for them, and that's what it's all going to come down to. There's a reason why the deadline for it is after the draft. There's a reason why they're waiting until after the draft. They want to see how it goes. If, for some reason, the best player on the board happens to be Tristan Wirfs, I could see them declining the option there. But I think that other than Tristan Wirfs, I don't think there's an offensive tackle at 15 they'll take. Maybe second round then at that point. But I think at that point, you're just looking at somebody who can possibly play right tackle and still picking up Garrett Bowles' fifth-year option. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. Let's grab Bronx Legend, who jumped in with a $5 donation. We appreciate you. says, so many that I would like at pick 15. If Ruggs and Isaiah Simmons drop to 10 or 12, who would you rather have? Hashtag dream scenario. Eric, I'll let you answer that one. This is actually really tough because I view them as similar players on both sides of the ball. Henry Ruggs opens up so much for everybody else on offense. Isaiah Simmons opens up so much else for everyone else on defense. All in all, I think that based basic need versus the position strength of the Broncos, I think that I would have to go Henry Ruggs. And I love Isaiah Simmons. He's my number my number two overall player, I believe, on the board. Maybe my number three overall player. Tremendous player, tremendous athlete, can do whatever you want on defense. But Vic Fangio has gotten a lot out of his defensive players that aren't as high a caliber as he is. And I like I like the depth that linebacker a little bit more. I'm not and this is and linebacker is one position that you can wait a little bit and get guys in the third or fourth round that have a similar impact on defense as guys that you get in the first and second rounds. Wide receiver, you start to see a drop off there. And just, again, Henry Ruggs' speed opening up everything else for it and everything else that he brings to the table because he's not just a speed receiver. Everything else he brings is just a tremendous compliment to what Cortland Sutton and Noah Fant bring as well. Okay, you heard it there. Ladies and gentlemen, let's grab Terry, one of our Super Chat superstars, jumping in with a $5 donation up in Canada and proving the Broncos country is not a geographic location. It is a state of being. Appreciate you, Terry. He says, who's Eric's dream pick at 46? That would be the Denver Broncos second round pick. Hashtag Eric's tie rocks. Hashtag dad hat Chad. <laughs> Amen to that. Who would be your dream pick at 46? Kai cheat and say Isaiah Simmons or Henry Ruggs and take the other one at 15. No, but um, seriously, uh, depending on it, it really depend on how, what happens at 15 or with the first round pick. If they move up and get Henry Ruggs, I think a guy like Ezra Cleveland or Lucas Niang would be there. Um, I think those would be good options as a developmental tackle, a guy who can start right away this year if need be, but mainly you're developing them to be the guy afterwards. Um, someone else, Trevon Diggs, Jeff Gladney, I think would actually really be my dream pick. I love his fit in the Broncos scheme and his ability to go and attack the ball. You know, he's a guy, and by the way, Steven jumps in with the $10 donation. Appreciate you, bro. You're on the uh, Mount Rushmore, as you know, of our MHH community. So consistent, and it really means a lot to us. <clears throat> Doesn't matter which podcast it is, you show up and you contribute and you're part of the conversation. And we love you, Steve. Okay, don't get weird about it. We love you. He says, hey, guys, I hope we get rugs. So Steve is like many in Broncos country at this point, Eric, who are pining for Henry Ruggs for the Denver Broncos. And Dave Cromwell jumps in with a $2 donation. Appreciate you, Dave. He says, which of the three wide receivers is most likely to be at 15? So that's a that's a different angle of the same question, but what do you think? I think even though he's my number one receiver, I think C.D. Lamb actually has the best chance. I've heard a lot of people high on rugs in the – uh, in the NFL world. And I've heard a lot of people that are high on Jerry Judy as well. So I think of that, I think CD lamb, I, there's some concerns about his play style, which I don't get personally. Um, I think that he's basically Deandre Hopkins. I, that's who I compare him to his ability to contort and go get the catch. He can make plays after the catch, just everything else. I think that he is the guy that's most likely to be there, but that's kind of stretching. I could see Jerry Judy, but again, most likely in my opinion, CD lamb. Nad Ludlow jumps in with a $2 donation. I appreciate you. We both do. He says, appreciate you guys working Saturday. Hashtag state of being. You better believe it, my friend. In fact, we have, as you guys know, one podcast going live, streaming live for every day in the week, seven days a week. Nobody else is doing that. Nobody else out there is is bringing you a podcast each and every single day of the week. You know, there's some are, you know friendly competitors out there that say it's a daily podcast. I don't know what you qualify as daily, Eric, but to me, the very definition of daily is at least one per day. Three or four per week isn't exactly daily. Let's grab this question here. An interesting, interesting point from Chris Sanders. Now, this, you know, there's there's no accounting for taste. 
beauty is in the the eye of the beholder. Chris's opinion here is he would rather get a Jeremy Chin in the second round or Terrell Burgess, the Utah safety, in the third over taking McKinney at 15, which is something, if you could guarantee it, I'd be right there with him and allow you to do something else at 15. My thing on that is that you don't want to pass up on top talent to bet on the depth. We saw Denver kind of do something similar to that in the 2014 class where they ended up walking away with Cody Latimer in the second round. And so that's always an issue there of just waiting on guys later. Don't know if they're going to be there. And there's a reason why they're going in that range and not going earlier. I mean, if you can guarantee Jeremy Chin is there at 46, I'd be all for it. Right. I absolutely love Jerry Jeremy Chen's play. I think that what I saw on tape is a first round, first round caliber player, but when you factor in the level of competition he played, he does have to drop a little bit. I absolutely love his tape, but you can't guarantee that it's going to be there. Yep. It's kind of like the old saying, striking while the iron is hot. You yep. got to make hay while the sun is shining. And the reality is that you, as Eric said, you can't bet on the depth. You can take a chance. You can roll the, the dice. But in a perfect world, I think both of us would rather grab someone else at 15 and either one of those safeties later on. It's just there's no guarantee in that. So we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. Buona B says, the draft is always a special day. I can't wait to cheer for the commission. Same here, man. This time, you know what? I'm going to be cheering for the commission. Instead of hearing all those boos and stuff, I'm just going to be stoked to see someone from the NFL doing something. I'm just going to be excited about that. All right. Brian, $2, jumps in. Appreciate that donation, Bri. One of our Super Chat superstars. In fact, <laughs> Brian is the all-time record holder as it stands for on Super Chat. So we really appreciate how consistent you are and and uh, outgoing and passionate, Brian. He says, tired of hearing about rugs. He's not in on the, the rugs train. I'm curious, though, Brian, because I understand the sentiment because, I'm not, as you guys know, I'm not crazy about going with a wide receiver in, in the first round. But I'm curious why do you just not like him as a prospect? I'd be curious to get your thoughts on that. And then, uh, David, is Goodell likely to be announcing the picks from his house? We'll see. We still don't know exactly how that's going to shake out, right? It's still in the wind in terms of the exact programming of how this is going to work. All I can tell you is that we're still super bummed that we couldn't get down to Vegas for the draft because of what's going on right now. Uh, Let's grab Manny Wise, who jumps in with a $20 donation. Thank you, Manny. Wow, that means a lot to us. He says, who would you guys like to see the Broncos pick up in the third round with their three picks? Eric, drop some knowledge on these beautiful listeners. Your three three solid candidates, similar to the first round thing where it's likely picks. Who do you like in the third for Denver? Um, well, I should, I want to start off by saying this, that I don't think come draft time or come the third round, I don't think Denver ends up having three third round draft picks. I think they have at most two. I think that they will be using at least one of those to facilitate a trade up. But, um, let's see guys that I really like in the third round, Akeem Davis Gaither. He's kind of that Isaiah Simmons light type player who can do a lot for a defense, very versatile, played over a hundred snaps at multiple different positions on the edge, off ball, in the slot, he can he can do a lot for him. Um, Trell Burgess is a safety that I do really like in the third round. Isaiah Wilson, the offensive tackle out of Georgia, I really like him. I like his upside that he brings, and having him paired with Mike Munchak and developing for the year, I think he could really develop into a really good left or really good right tackle in the NFL. Um, Logan Wilson, I'm all right with. I'm not the highest on him. Devin Duvernay, he's one receiver that if even if Denver gets rugs or not, I would absolutely love Devin Duvernay in the third round. Dude is consistent. I think he's had one career drop or one drop this last year when he had over 100 catches. Just tremendous hands, tremendous athlete. Plays the position a little bit like a running back after the catch, but he has the speed to stretch the field too. Just a tremendous player that I really like. And um, let's see, Ben Barch, St. John's. Um, if he's there, Matt Hennessy, a center out of Temple, I really like, or Keith Ishmael, a center out of San Diego State. Those are two guys that I think can step in and be day one starters for the Broncos at center. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. What about late day two corners? Who are some guys out there? Let's say the Broncos do get a wide receiver in the first and you know they grab an offensive lineman or something in the second. Who do you like? as possibilities of being there round three. Um, Troy Pride Jr. out of Notre Dame is a guy I really like in that range. There is a corner from Iowa. I'm not going to try to pronounce his name because I have no idea how. I'm terrible at pronouncing names um, that I really like at that range. 
Um, other corners, maybe Amik Robinson or Robertson. Robinson. I can't remember which one it is. Ends up falling to that range. Um, I really like him. Small school, kind of that, kind of that corner that we've seen Vic Fangio kind of gravitate to with Bryce Callahan and Chris Harris. That smaller guy who can play the outside or play the slot. Um, let's are see, you talking, are, Eric? Are you talking about Michael Ojemudia? M- M- Michael Ojemudia? M- M- Jeez, I think it's. I think it's. I think it's all. Oh, hey, Moodya, I think. Oh, hey, Moodya. There you go. Hey, I'm dude. Not, I'm not See? positive on it. So uh, I'm not sure. But, yes, that is the guy I'm talking about. Attaboy. All right, cool. Cool, cool. Okay, sorry to cut you off there. I know I, know I interrupted your stream of consciousness. Let's grab uh, Chase, who jumps in with a $2 donation. Appreciate you, my brother. He says, is any wide receiver after the big three worth the pick at 15? It seems like I read, Eric, on your rankings that you have Justin Jefferson as your four, am I misremembering that? And if so, is he worth or anyone? As Chase is asking, there at fifteen. Um, I think that one guy. I'm not really sure that there's a receiver in my opinion that's worth it. Um, Justin Jefferson is my fourth. I wouldn't take him at fifteen. Denzel Mims is my fifth. I wouldn't take him at fifteen either. But with things that I've been hearing with how NFL is viewing these receivers. I could see a potential Denzel Mims selection there for the Broncos. He has the track speed. He has the ability to go get contested catches, body contortion. He can play after the catch. I mean, pretty well after the catch anyways, and just do a lot. And one of his best traits is that he's a physical blocker on the, on the outside. So maybe if Denver misses out and they really want to go receiver at 15, I could see it. I would prefer a trade down though, for any other receiver outside of the big three. One of our listeners over on Periscope on Twitter has a question that I'm also curious to get your thoughts on. Jimmy Cheeks wants to know about Davion Taylor, the linebacker at CU, who, of course, has many ties to the Broncos, not just because he's at CU, but, you know, teammates, Juwan Winfrey, Philip Lindsay. Your thoughts on Davion Taylor? Very raw, very athletically gifted. I think that this is a guy who on tape – can't remember exactly. I think I have him a fifth round grade, but I fully expect him to go in the top 100, maybe just outside of the top 100. And the simple reason for that is NFL coaches, they love raw athleticism. You can teach them to play football, but you can't teach them to be athletic. And I think that's what he has going for him. Dude has plenty of speed and just a tremendous athlete. If you can teach him how to play football, he can be a really good linebacker in the NFL. Colton Ensley jumps in with a $5 donation. Thank you, Colton. He says, thanks for the pods, boys. Loving it. You better believe it. And we might, you know, what I learned today is there might not be such a thing. And this is something Eric's been trying to tell me now for a week or so. There might not be such a thing as too much live stream podcasting, especially during this time, what we're going through. And so many more people are sitting at home and got to find something to keep you sane, something to help you pass the time, something to you know, keep the, keep the wheels turning and whatnot. So maybe we can start doing more, but uh, yeah, we're just happy to have you guys joining us and participating in these live streams. There's nothing like it out there for us. Brian is clarifying his previous point about rugs. And thank you again for the donation, Brian. He says, I'm predicting rugs as a bust as I think he will go to the Raiders and Derek Carr doesn't throw deep often. And I like CD lamb number one uh, in the draft and Judy number two. Now, Eric, again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? There's no accounting for taste. This is Brian's take. And I don't know. I'm kind of torn because as much as I can be persuaded and compelled by what the way you talk about envisioning rugs in this scheme and what it could do for everybody, something's screaming to me that C.D. Lamb and Jerry Judy are more of a sure thing and not exactly chopped liver in, in comparison to rugs. They're both great prospects, and I think that the one big concern with Jerry Judy is that his is while he's an excellent route runner, we've seen excellent route runners coming out of Alabama and the Ridley brothers, and have them see see them fall a little bit. I mean, NFL teams they want that speed, they want that athletic ability, and Judy's kind of limited there. So I think that's one concern when it comes to the comes to the Raiders, and I don't exactly disagree with this i don't i think that if henry ruggs did go to the raiders he won't see the stats that he might see with another team but i think that he'd be able to impact that offense in different ways because of the threat his speed brings i would wouldn't be shocked at all if he opens up and we see a a even better year from darren waller or some of the other receivers that they have um guys whose names i can't remember because it's the raiders and i don't care raiders 
But um, Darren Waller is the only name I did just because I just talked about him in a comparison, actually, to another player in this draft. Claypool. But, um, yeah, Claypool. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I think that he would impact them in different ways. I don't think he'd have the stats he would elsewhere. So I can kind of agree with that. But also we have to wonder if, if the Raiders go get a Justin Herbert, which there's a lot of rumors going around about that, that maybe they'd open up that deep ball a little bit more. Buana wants to know, what do you think about that the cornerback named Riley from Army as a prospect? I know nothing about this guy, so I don't know if you have an evaluation on him. I haven't had a chance to watch him. I don't get a chance to see many of the Academy guys. So, Todd, appreciate that, my friend. Guys, that's an easy way that you can organically support what we do to bring you these podcasts every day is wherever you're watching, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, wherever you're watching these live streams, simply liking this video. This stream does a lot in terms of vaulting this this uh, each each video and getting it out to a wider audience. So appreciate that, Todd. All right, let's grab a couple more, and then we got to get out of here for tonight. Unfortunately, let's grab Orange Crush number uh, with a five dollar donation. Appreciate you, my friend. He says, "Why not go BPA, best player available, and let the chips fall where they may? Drafting for need is going to get you in trouble." I like. Derek Brown, the Auburn D tackle, and Javon Kinlaw from South Carolina D, D lineman, if they are there. Orange Crush, you and I probably share a little bit more of a brain on this pr- specific topic. However, Eric, one thing that I hate to burst people's bubble on this, but I have to remind people every once in a blue moon, when it comes to BPA, that is a oft used but little understood trope or cliche. The truth is, Teams don't just draft best players available on the board if it's not at a position of need with very few exceptions of some sort. Now, you can define the need in terms of its severity or urgency, Eric. But, for example, if you took uh, if you already had a Pro Bowl wide receiver and you drafted a wide receiver in the first round last year and you go on the clock in the first round and that number one player on your board who's available as a wide receiver, there's a good bet you're probably taking the next player on your board as an example. So in other words, the best way to think about it is best player available at a position of need. And guys like John Elway, what they like to say is, and you know, hopefully we get a good player, the best player available at a position of need. So, you know, they, they speak in, in uh, riddles as well. Yeah. I, I, this is something that I've spoken about a lot on is BPA is definitely it's best player available at a position of need. And that's just how it is, is teams, they know that they have to build the roster. You can't consistently take the be- the pure best player available because otherwise you're going to get overloaded at one position, whereas another position is going to be so weak that you're just not getting production out of them. So you have to balance that out. And I'm actually with you. I am all for, I've been pounding the table for Javon Kinlaw for months. I'm a big fan of Derek Brown. I would take either one of them at 15 right now, even with Shelby Harris coming back, Jarrell Casey being traded for, Mike Purcell coming back. I mean, Jarrell Casey is going to be 31 this year. Shelby Harris and Mike Purcell, that, that's only one-year deals. You, you still have to worry about the future of it. And the depth of the Broncos' defensive line is still in tatters because of everybody who left. I mean, Derek Wolf and Adam Gossett. So you still have to factor that in. I like Derek Brown a little bit more than Javon Kinlaw at 15 because he can come in and beat out Mike Purcell for the nose tackle spot. But I would take either one of them because, in my opinion, defensive line is still a pretty big need. Amen to that. Let's uh, let's grab Todd's question here. He says, how far back could the Broncos trade back and still get Mims? This is one that I, I kind of mentioned this on Twitter just a couple days ago, that I think that if Denver wants to move back and get Mims, I think that they'd just be best, best off staying put. I don't think that they can move down very far because I, there are other teams that like him in that 16 to 21 range, <clears throat> Eagles, that if they don't miss out on the top three receivers, Mims is their next target. So I think that if Denver wants him, it's just best to stay put. I don't think they'd be able to move down very far. Maybe maybe 17, maybe 18, somewhere there, but just don't think that it'd be a, a huge move to make it worth it. By the way, Chris, we appreciate that. Two Mile High Huddle Pods in a day. What's better than that? Thanks for the great content, guys. You bet, man. Dylan, by the way, he's uh, – I don't know what you're talking about here, but I wanted to give you a shout-out because – you uh, you had a significant super chat on Thursday night, and even though we got to put your comment or your name and whatnot up on the show, it was one of those times where the comment stream passed by the, the super chat, so we couldn't show the card. And I just wanted to show you a little love, man. We really appreciated that. Did not go unnoticed. You are the man, my friend. All right, let's grab 
couple more guys, then we got to bounce on out. Uh, let's see. Bear with us for just a second here. Let's grab a good one. Here's, well, I know we've already answered one from Todd, but it's a dang good question. What do you think of the overall defensive tackle class? He says, I think this is a great class for the Broncos to grab some impact players on defense. What are your thoughts overall? I think this class in the top 100 has some good prospects. After you get out of the top 100, I think that it's very limited with what you're looking for. Um, I think right when you – I mean, maybe some guys slip to the fourth round, but it's just – I don't want to say it's top heavy because I mean you only have really Derek Brown and Javon Kinlaw at the top, but it's got good depth in that one top one hundred. And then after that, it's maybe this guy can develop into a depth piece, maybe not. Guys that I wouldn't really spend high picks on, and just kind of start hoping that maybe they go on draft and I'll look at them then. All right, guys, I hate to be the one to cut any podcast short, but we really do have to only grab one or two more. I'm just trying to find the right comment that's an actual question here. Uh, Jerry with the uh, – I was going to grab you, Jerry, but it's not really a question. Here's a good one. I've already read some of your analysis on Benito Jones, uh, Ole Miss, right? But, uh, am I thinking of the right guy? Yep. Chris wants to know, do you all like Benito Jones, big defensive tackle Ole Miss, and what round is a good round to pick him? Round six? I think he's a very solid nose tackle. I'm not sure he's really an upgrade over what Mike Purcell brings to the table, but if Denver wants to look at him and add another competition, another piece to compete there at the nose tackle position, I think that sixth round would be very fair for Jones. All right, guys, last one from the mayor of our MHH community on YouTube, Buona Beast himself. He says, I think the Panthers will change the draft. Where do they go? Does the trade for Okung take tackle away completely? Let me pull up uh, – I'm not even sure what the order is. Let me just pull it up real quick so I have a visual. I have some of them in mind, but not. Okay, so Panthers are picking seven. What are your thoughts to what he's saying there, Eric? Well, I've heard from two very people, two different people that both of them have given me very reliable information when it comes to the Panthers in the past. One of them said that 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 the Panthers are Isaiah Simmons for. And the other one said that the Panthers are Derek Brown's floor. So I fully expect them to go defense. I mean, with lo- losing Luke quickly with their defense line, kind of taking some big hits with losing what don't, they lost on Tari Poe and uh, Gerald McCoy, I think both of them. So mm. they took some big hits on the defensive line. So Brown makes sense. Isaiah Simmons to fill that linebacker spot. I think those are the two positions they're looking at. I don't think that corner uh, that quarterbacks really where they're going, but obviously we don't know. I don't know for sure. I think that they are a team that they want to build up the rest of the roster, go out there, see what they have, evaluate, and then just go after like a Trevor Lawrence, a Justin Fields, or a Brock Purdy in the 2021 draft. Glenn, we want to give Maki a chance. I put him in timeout so you won't see him the rest of this pod. Maki, if you're still listening, you're not able to comment in the stream, just try and be uh, kinder, right? Try. It's not always what you say, it's how you say things. So try and be a little less confrontational and uh, a more positive member of the community. All right, guys, last one. Paul just jumped in from the top rope. So consistent, huge supporter of building the Broncos and Dove Valley Deep Divers, but especially Dove Valley Deep Divers. Paul, he says, thanks for the pod. I know we both appreciate that. But, Paul, and you've been a longtime listener of Mile High Huddle Podcast, so it uh, it does not go unnoticed. We really appreciate you, my friend. Last one, Brian, keeping us uh, keeping us on the hook means a lot. Appreciate that, my brother. All right, guys, we got to wrap this up for now. Um, thank you for joining us. Mile high salute to each and every one of our super chat superstars. Appreciate Bonna Beast for keeping everybody on the straight and narrow in the comment stream. And you know, Maki, we had to put you in timeout, but that doesn't mean we don't love you. Come back next time and just keep it civil my friend otherwise here's what's to uh, look forward to guys first and foremost a reminder to i'm sure most of you are following eric on twitter at eric trickle he's a guy that you want to follow around the nfl calendar let me get that out in front first and foremost but especially during draft and pre-draft make sure you're following him on twitter and then also the dvd d underscore pod on twitter just to stay plugged into any programming changes, what's coming, what what you might can look forward to. After all, 
they have two of the seven podcasts, our live streams each and every week. So you want to make sure you're staying on top of what they're doing. You can find me at Chad and Jensen. And this is especially crucial, guys. Follow if you're on Twitter, follow at Mile High Huddle. And then here's what to expect. I'll be back in the saddle tomorrow, uh, 615 Mountain, 815 Eastern for Huddle Up Podcast. We're thinking of doing some kind of a mock draft roundup, uh, just kind of going over some of the mocks from the bigger national draft nicks over the last week. We'll see how it goes. But until then, though, guys, have a great weekend. And, Eric, great job these last two days. And we'll be talking to you here soon, guys. Three or four Finding Broncos coming out every day at milehighhuddle.com. So make sure you're staying plugged into that. And, Eric, You're doing a great job there, my friend. Thank you. Really appreciate that. All right, guys. Sorry to cut you a little bit short here tonight, uh, but we got to go. For Eric, I'm Chad. Thank you for watching and participating in Dove Valley Deep Divers. We will talk to you next time. You've been listening to the Huddle Up Podcast. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com to keep the conversation going.